Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. We're going to be um, doing our Bible study today on Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 13. So if you've got your Bibles, you can turn there. And uh, just Mark's Gospel, the shortest of all the Gospels, one of the synoptics. And uh, it's a really fascinating read, very fast paced um, and a yeah, really exciting Gospel. So let's just uh, read together verse 1 to 13. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. So we're just going to look at as well quite a few points, quite a few things within this. Just um, really quickly whiz through some of it. To start, this introduction that we see in the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. A very different introduction to the other Gospels. Matthew and Luke make a point of looking at the birth of Jesus. John's Gospel famously starts with, um, you know, this poem of in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Very kind of poetic um, writing. And here is just this very simple statement of fact. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. But there is significance in that Mark 2 uses the word beginning. There is a, a pointing back to Genesis, to God acting first, doing something first, doing something in the world. And here Mark is making the same point that this is the beginning. This is the start where God is doing something, where God is acting. And what's he doing? He's doing something good through Jesus, the Messiah, an act of salvation. Really significant. And for us you know, the Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But for the authors at the time, the good news, the Gospel was the story of salvation. The story of salvation they wanted to share to those around them. Hence why they took time to compile and write um, the Gospels. Then we move on to um, a passage from Isaiah. And in this passage from Isaiah, one word is mentioned twice, um, which is the way. Prepare your way. And prepare the way for the Lord. And this theme of the way is something that Mark will pick up on. In particular in, in uh, chapter 8 onwards. Um, when Jesus is declared by Peter as the Messiah. And then Jesus um, starts talking more about his death. And starts focusing on heading towards Jerusalem. Where he will ultimately be crucified. This is the way of Jesus. And in fact after Jesus um, is declared as the Messiah by Peter. Jesus goes on to teach the disciples about the cost of discipleship and the need for them to pick up their cross and to follow him, to follow the way of Jesus. And, you know, so the, the way of Jesus could be perhaps described as a bit mystic. It could be described as, uh, you know, ethical rules. People might describe it as a religious system. But for Mark, that's, it is not, none of those things. It's something practical. It's something transforming. It's, it's a way of Jesus that ultimately will take him to the cross and call us to follow on that path of service and of love for others. We then read about John the Baptist and there's clear parallels between him and Elijah. And then in verse nine onwards, we read that Jesus comes to John to be baptised. And at that, this baptism, Jesus sees the heavens open up and a voice declares, you are my son whom I love with whom I am well pleased. In the Old Testament, only Israel and some of the kings, uh, some of Israel's kings, are declared as God's son. It was a very unique, specific title used for Israel. And yet where Israel had failed to fulfil that role as God's son, Jesus 
would pick up that mantle and would succeed. Here he is affirmed as the son of God and he is empowered to do the work that God has called him to do. And at his baptism, Jesus is accepting this role and he is empowered to do it. But he's not going to be speaking for God. He's going to be speaking as God. It's why he has permission to forgive sins. It's why he's able to command the waves and the sea and the wind, because he is speaking as God. Later on in Mark chapter 11, when he's asked by what authority does he speak and act, Jesus actually brings up baptism. He brings up this moment where he is affirmed as God's son and where he is empowered to do the work of God's son too. One thing I find encouraging in particular from this um, little story at the beginning of Jesus' ministry is that before Jesus has done anything, before he has started his ministry, he is affirmed that he is loved and that God is pleased with him. Too often I get caught up in the idea that I have to do certain things for God to be pleased with me. And the Bible actually tells me that he loves me because of who I am, more than because of what I do. Then in verse 12, we read about this fast paced nature of Mark's gospel. At once, the spirit sent him out into the wilderness at once from baptism to then being driven out. And this is something if you read through the whole of Mark, you could probably do it in, in one sitting if you if you have the kind of stamina to do so. It's a really good exercise to do. But you'll see the fast paced nature of Mark that it goes from one event to the next, to the next, to the next. There's not so much long passages of teaching as there are in Matthew and Luke. It's just very fast paced, moving from one scenario to the next. I mean, there's an encouragement even in there for us at times to take the word of God seriously and to act on it and to act on it now, to pick up our cross and to follow Jesus now, not to complete it, contemplate it for weeks on end, but to do so ASAP. It's then also interesting in verse 12 that it's the spirit who sends Jesus into the wilderness. Jesus has just had this amazing experience, being baptised, being affirmed, being told that he's loved, being told that God is pleased with him, being filled with the Spirit. And yet that same Spirit then sends him out into the wilderness. Mark Edwards, who wrote a commentary on Mark, a really great commentary to read if you're interested in doing that kind of reading, says this, that what happens in the Jordan is as divinely orchestrated as what happens in the wilderness. The same spirit that empowers Jesus sends him for a challenge. And that can so often be true for us that we can have an amazing encounter experience empowering from God. And then the next day or the next moment we can experience challenge or hardship. And it's important to recognise that that doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. So it perhaps means that we've got something to learn and it's an opportunity for us to trust in him. Mark then highlights that Jesus is tempted by Satan. And the story of the temptation is not as in-depth as in the, some of the other Gospels. But yet here it is. And it tells us that he's being tempted by Satan. And a theme of Jesus up against Satan is one that you'll see throughout Mark. For example, the very first um, miracle that Jesus performs in Mark um, is the casting out um, of an impure spirit. The casting out. Um, of a demon. The very first parable that Jesus tells in Mark's gospel is a parable about a strong man making reference to Satan. It's widely believed that the gospel of Mark was written around the time of the emperor Nero. Nero was someone who was persecuting Christians left, right and centre. He was burning them. He was sending them to be eaten by wild animals in the Colosseum. In fact, that's one of the reasons why people believe Mark might have included in that verse 13 that Jesus was with wild animals because of the suffering that the Christians were experiencing at the time to encourage them that Jesus knew what it meant to suffer, knew what it meant to be tested, knew what it meant to be in a place of wilderness and struggle. And yet to encourage them that he was with them and the angels would perhaps even attend to them too in their time of need. Then lastly, the theme of wilderness. The wilderness is an important theme that we see in Mark. Now wilderness we know is an Old Testament theme. Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years. Moses 
um, was in Mount Sinai in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Elijah was on his way to Mount Horeb in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Wilderness in the Old Testament is a place where our faith is tested. It's a proving ground, but it's also a place where there's a promise of deliverance. It's often a place where God speaks. And right now we might feel like we're in a wilderness might feel like we're having a wilderness experience during the coronavirus pandemic, whether that's as a church or personally. But be encouraged that this is perhaps a testing of our faith. It's perhaps a proving ground. But with that comes a promise of deliverance, that Jesus will win the victory. He won the victory against Satan in the wilderness. He won it when he cast out the impure spirits and he won the ultimate victory on the cross. And so we can trust in him that no matter what we experience, whether in times of plenty or times of wilderness, that he will be victorious, that he will be with us. So we've covered lots of things today. We've looked at wilderness. We've looked at the way of Jesus, picking up our cross and following him. We've looked at Jesus' victory over Satan. And we've looked at that fast paced nature that we see within Mark's gospel. So I encourage you, do maybe pick it up and try and read it read through see if you can see any of those themes as you go through the rest of the gospel and but that's it for today let's just quickly pray father i thank you for your word i pray that you would help us to have our eyes and ears open to what you're doing and who you are and lord that what we read in this gospel lord would speak to what you're doing in our life today in your name amen amen have a blessed day